I thought it was about time that I did an updated Power Diary video. The overview and tutorial that I have on my channel right at the beginning was done nearly two years ago, so it definitely needed a refresh and update. There have been many changes to Power Diary in the last two years, so I do show you some of those, and I'll also show you how we onboard a new client for a therapy practice. For those of you who don't know me, I'm Kim. I help therapists get online, get confident with admin, and reduce tech overwhelm. So in this video, like I just said, I'm going to be showing you how we would onboard a new client for a therapist. So we would be working as virtual assistants and we would be onboarding a new client. But it would be the same process if you are a therapist working without a virtual assistant and just doing it yourself. So I'm going to go through the process we have and I'll show you all of the steps that we take to onboard a new client. I'll also show you some of the updates that have been made in Power Diary so that you can see the difference if you've seen my old video, which I will link to because it is uh, relevant, but you'll be able to see some updates that have been made. And I also just wanna mention that if you are looking to move to Power Diary, I do have a free resource, which is a workbook. So you would fill in all of the information on the workbook and it will really help you get set up on Power Diary and extract all of the information about your practice from your brain onto paper so that you can move it onto a system. And there's also a checklist as well, so you can make sure that you're setting everything up on Power Diary ready to use. So so it's completely free and I'll leave a link in the description. So let's jump straight into my computer so I can show you behind the scenes of Power Diary and how to onboard a new therapy client. Okay, so what I'm going to show you today is how we would onboard a new client for a therapist. So we're now in Power Diary, we're in the main dashboard, which is always the calendar. So to add a new person, you're just going to go to people and create we would do this once the therapist had told us that they are taking a new client on. So when the therapist gets an inquiry, they will add that to our master client list, which I'll link in the description below. You can get their free template for that. They will do a discovery call, usually on the phone. So that would be done outside of Power Diary. And once that client is definitely going to become a regular client, we would then add them to the system. So the only thing you need to do in this section here is just add the first name and last last name so we're just gonna make that up so from here we can just click next and as you will see this profile detail section has actually got slightly bigger we have all of these gender sex and pronouns section here so that has been added so that you can add all the details about your client as needed so we've got the first name and last name you can add a preferred name in there as well so if your client had the name like Nicholas and they preferred to be called Nick you can put the preferred name in there we also have their date of birth and then further down here we have contact details so at this stage the only thing we'd probably know about the client is their email address and their mobile number so we can add both of those things in now and then what we will do is we will leave everything else about the client until they have filled in their onboarding forms. So I'm just going to add a mobile number and email address. So the next thing to do would be to check the time zone. So if you work with clients in different countries, this is really good because when you send them reminders and booking confirmations, they will get the time of their appointment in their time zone as opposed to yours which can save a lot of confusion so if you need to change the time zone of your client you can do that here we would then add in the status of the client so this would be an active client and then you can choose the client type as well so we have couples and individuals you may have minors and you may have other types of clients maybe you separate your clients by what you are doing with them so you might have an emdr client or a dbt client or something like that so however you want to select your client types so i'm just going to put this as an individual and then i'm going to click save the next thing we would then do is go to the contacts. So when the therapist would meet with the client, we would know if somebody else was going to make payments on their behalf, like a guarantor or something like that. So if that is the case and you want invoices to go to a different person, what you want to do is add a new contact. We're gonna create a new profile. Here you can select the relationship. So I'm just gonna put father. 
And then you want to put their first name and last name and at least an email address so that you can send invoices to them. You can then also decide if they are an emergency contact and if they get appointment reminders. So if Siobhan was a minor, you might want her father to get the appointment reminders so that he could remind her about the appointments and you know help her get online and things like that. In the intake paperwork, Siobhan would decide who her emergency contact is. So her father might be paying her invoices, but maybe her mother is her emergency contact. So I just am going to show you what it looks like in the contact page if we do switch this on, but we can always change this once the paperwork comes in. So switch that on for emergency contact, click save. And then if we go back to contacts, you can see here that we've got the person who is a contact for Siobhan and it and it's ticked on that they are their emergency contact as well. So if they were also a reminder contact, then this would be ticked on as well. The next place we would go is to the appointment reminders. We automatically have reminders set up as a company. So we have the appointment reminder email. If you only work online or you only work face to face, you would just have one email appointment reminder and then that would be fine. You wouldn't need to do this step. However, if you do have appointment reminders for online and appointment reminders for face to face, you may want to override the company set email reminders for individual clients. So if you had additional appointment reminders, so maybe you had appointment reminder online and appointment reminder face to face, you can switch. So I'm just going to click the SMS one just to show you what it looks like here. And then you can decide that this client is going to get the online appointment reminder instead of the face to face or vice versa. So you can do that there. And then once you've made your changes, just click save changes. Once we've done that, the next thing we will do is go ahead to the billing setup and we will set up the person's billing information. So the person we're going to bill to is the father. So I'm going to select that this person is going to get the invoices instead of Siobhan. And here we can also select the service or pack. So here you can decide what kind of session the client has and how much they are paying. So I'm just going to put this as £100. You can also add discounts on as well. So let's say you are entering someone onto your low fee program. You want to select your current fee and then you want to give them a discount here. So it's marked on their invoice that they're getting a discount and that you can clearly see that. It also helps that you don't have millions and millions of services set up like one for your main fee and then one for every single fee that you're offering to somebody else. So instead of doing that, you can select your main fee and then just add a discount here if we're giving a discount, for example. So I'm just going to give them a £10 discount to show you what that would look like. I'm going to save changes. The next thing I would do is then book the person's first appointment onto the system so that then I can send a welcome email and their intake paperwork. So if I go back to the calendar, I can then decide what appointment they're going to have. So let's say that they're starting next week at 8 a.m. So we can just click on the rectangle, the cell of the closest appointment times. This is going to be eight o'clock. We can search for Siobhan. It already decides what session they're going to have because we've already set that up. We can add a flag. So maybe we have like initial appointment or something like that. So maybe there's something different you do in the initial appointment. Maybe you have an intake session, you know, questionnaire or something like that. So I'm going to flag that as initial appointment and I'm going to click save. OK, and then what you can then do is you can decide whether you're going to recur that appointment. So if you are seeing Siobhan every week at 8 a.m. or every other week at 8 a.m., you can click on the recurring options, make recurring. You can decide whether it's every one week, every two weeks and decide when it ends as well. So maybe you want to set her up for six sessions. So we're going to do five more. So I'm going to click save and you can also decide that the status is confirmed. That's in a confirmed appointment. And you can see here that we have the bill is £90 because your normal session fee is £100, but you're giving £10 discount to this client. So we can click on save there and you'll see this line here change from blue, which is pending to green, which is confirmed. So now we can send our welcome email. So if you search for the client, so you can just go up to search bar here and type in the client's name. Then you want to go to communication and new email. You can select a related appointment. So when we send a welcome email, we have set up the template to include information about their initial appointment. So you want to select that, yes, this is for the confirmed appointment. We're then going to select the email template that we want to use. So mine is called welcome email. 
And here you can see that certain information has been added in. So we've got the client's name that's been put in here. We've got what date and time the first session is on. This template can also be edited as well before we send it. So I want to change here to say that it's going to be weekly sessions. And I'm also going to change the fee because we've given them a discount. So this is all the information that I want to send them. You can see here we've got a link to the intake form too. So the client will get this email. They can click on this link and they can complete their intake paperwork online. And then we can just click save and send. If we then go to the activity, you can see that the email has been sent and the date and time. So if you ever need to refer back to it, you can see that there. Some other things that I would also like to show you in the client profile. If we head back to the billing setup, we can add extra invoice information here. So let's say you are working with medical insurers you can add on specific information here such as the client's date of birth address the authorization number and the membership or policy number on all of the invoices for this client which will save you time when you are sending invoices to insurers another thing with insurers are session packs so you can set up session packs so let's say Booper have authorized 12 sessions for this client. You can set up a session pack for 12 sessions at the rate that the insurer has agreed. And then the system will count down how many sessions they have had so that you know when you need to alert the client that they need to get more authorized. So you can use that. In records and forms, here is where any forms that you have sent your client to complete will be saved. So we have sent them the intake form, Obviously, yours would be a lot longer than this, but here, once the client has completed it, this will change from draft to completed and all of the information will be saved there. If you have set up merge fields so that basically the first name links to the first name on the profile and the email and the mobile phone number and all of that kind of stuff, it's going to automatically populate those fields on the client profile as well, which will save you a lot of admin time. You can collapse this as well. So if you've sent multiple forms, over the time you've been working with client like release of information forms and things like that you can collapse it and then you'll be able to open the specific one that you want to see if we head to notes either in the records or the admin depending on who is saving and writing the note you'll be able to create appointment notes so if you just click on create new select the appointment so let's use this confirmed one you can decide which one you want to do so maybe this is just the simple template and then you can record the session notes this can be done in records or in admin so you can decide where you want to keep them if you're working with a VA and you want to keep everything separate so that they can't see session notes you want to keep them in this section otherwise you can keep them in admin and then they will be able to see them too so it depends whether you want your VA to see them or not. In the communication, this is where you can send your client new emails. And also if you look in activity, you can see everything that's ever been sent to them. So they might tell you they didn't get an appointment reminder or something like that. And you can check that it was actually sent. And in the admin, if you go to manage, let's say you are working in a group practice, you can decide who the primary practitioner is. So here I've got, you know, Kimberly or Claire. So you can decide who the primary, you know, therapist who's working with that client and you can also select who has access here so these are all the people that have access currently but what you can say is no I don't want any of these people to have access other than me as a therapist and then maybe the VA so Claire and Margaret here will not be able to see this client's profile so even if they search for her in power diary it will not come up you can select a default appointment flag so maybe you want to say this person is always online so you want to highlight that as an online appointment this will help you on the calendar to see visually what kind of client they are so depending on what appointment flags you've set up they will be a different color so maybe your standard ones are online and they will be white and then any face-to-face -face ones will be highlighted in a different color to make it much easier for you to visually see who is face-to-face -face. so this can be really helpful if you're working in like a group practice and then we can click save changes yes update uh, what will probably happen is though on this one it's going to change this appointment flag it's changed the flag to online so I can just change that one back to the initial appointment and save See, that's gone yellow and then all the rest are green for online. So you can amend anything that you've done, anything you've created as a system wide 
instruction you can override. Once the client has completed their intake paperwork, you will be notified and you can add different people to be notified. So let's say you are the therapist, but you have a VA, you can have it so that you and the VA are notified that paperwork has been completed. And then you'll be able to find the paperwork and match up any information that you need to match up that the system doesn't do for you. So like I said, they will have merge fields for things like mobile phone number, address, postcode, email, things like that. But for contacts and anybody that they have given you release of information permission for, you will need to add those on manually. So then you would go through and do that as well. So that would be the final step of onboarding a new client using Power Diary. I really hope you found that tutorial useful. I will leave the steps that we take to onboard a new client in the description below. So please make sure to check that out. And if you're looking to make the switch to Power Diary, I will also leave my affiliate link in the description below, which will give you six months half price and also 500 free SMS credits, which you can use to send text reminders to your clients about your appointments and reduce those no-shows and cancellations. I also have that workbook, which is gonna help you get set up completely for free, and I'll leave the link in the description for that too. I really hope you found that useful. I love talking about Power Diary, so if you have any questions for me on the system and why I love it so much, please add a comment, and I'd love to answer those questions for you. For now, thanks so much for watching.